Every day I have to read. And we have given people free access to pluralsites.com or edx and so on. Any course you want to do, you charge it to the company and do it there, whatever you want to enhance the talent. So we don't have a lot of formal training programs because we can't afford to have very structured. But if you think you need a skill, or if your manager thinks you need a skill, go to the website, register, do the course. Almost every course is available online, right from negotiation skills to technical courses to whatever else you may have. We do some things like, you know, train people that on the etiquette side of it, which is something we need to do in person because we don't want people using their hands when in France and so on with other countries. And structures you need to rethink, you know, the traditionally, I don't know how many of you would have seen a movie in which Smita Patil and Nasridhan Shah were there and then Smita Patil's father says, get married to this guy because he has 400 sheep. So the traditional hierarchy has been the number of people, if you have more people, you are more powerful. This will be a typical internal organization politics. I may have oversimplified it, but generally, I think that's the way. If you're a big team, you're a bigger person. If you don't have a big team, you align with the boss or do something, and so on and so forth. So power structures get created, and that's how the organizations work. For those of you who disagree, we can talk after this. So I, I spent a lot of time with our team yesterday, about one hour with the team telling them that we will have only four-seater, six-seater, and eight-seater desks in the company. We will have nothing else. Occasional cases, we may have 10 or 12-seater desks. And uh, you will all be sitting on the desks, and you will not have individual areas also. There will be quite places for you to go and work. You need to work quietly, but this is the new norm, four, six, eight-seater. Because the rule in the Silicon Valley is they, call, they say the two pizza boxes team. If a lunch requires more than two pizza boxes, the team size is wrong. This is two pizza boxes team means eight people at max. Nothing more than that will be allowed in the company. And these teams will come together and disband on a continuous basis. I'll just give you an example to illustrate the point is, we were to build electronic flight bag which the pilots use. And uh, I got an estimate of nine months from our team. So I told them that I needed a maximum 45 days before Diwali comes, this should be up and running. It's not possible. So I took the room next to my room and assembled the team and said, you will all sit here. And person is carrying well before Diwali the design to the customers in US. What was to take nine months? Three weeks later, things are working. I pulled two programmers from the mobility team, two people who did the version eight years back, who know the subject very well from that team, pulled some back-end programmers, pulled one person from the design team, and uh, had a subject matter expert who would make sure that the software that I don't, does not mess up with something that is working somewhere else. And the speed at which it is working, so we are constituting the second team like that, and third team, and so on, and we'll convert everything into teams like this. Ranjan has done something similar with his HR team, which every new feature recruitment hub is one single team. Training and development, the new feature coming is another, another such team. And so there is nowhere to hide in this team anymore. There's a big team you can hide. Volve is a case study which you must study. Volve is a case study whereby everybody has desk on wheels and they can join any team and they can move out. The team hierarchy is very fluid. It's a, a seminal case study. It's a classic. It's a 40-page case study of how wall works. It's, it's, it's important that you go through this to figure out. And recently, Zappos has done the same. I don't know if there is jury still out on Zappos as to whether it's working for them or not, but they've done exactly the same thing. So, and if you don't get, get accepted by the team, it's quite a sign that you, know, you don't belong. You need to find another job. Well, you may take your desk to somewhere that those people may not welcome you and <laughs> send you back. Uh, and we talked about 
you know, the need to know, the need to know where everybody is going, heading, to have a shared sense of destiny, shared sense of arrival, knowing the targets and so on. That's how the teams can work. So this is the air traffic controller view. Need to know everything. You can't have a partial view. You can't have only landings and not takeoffs, then you'll have an accident. So for that to happen, you need to have the dashboard. This is the dashboard for the marketing team. So they all know the website has to launch. Many people will, might be working on it. The manager of the team has this dashboard. Now, how many bugs to be tracked, how many design requests, and so on and so forth. So these are tools like Asana and tools like Slack and tools like Teamwork and tools like Basecamp and all, all do. People work in teams. In fact, people have, have written obituary of emails that emails won't exist. And rethink measurement, you know, when you're in HR, if you can't quantify, it's becoming very woolly, fluffy, nice. In fact, I had a, used the image of a, of a toy earlier, the, just to show the, the fluffy, nice to have, cuddly image of uh, HR. You know, there is now technology available in terms of big data, which can predict what people will leave, when, how many, and so on and so forth. And what's the pipeline of people which can go up? How many people have left? What are the people in the... So that you know where you are headed in a quantifiable term. And one thing, uh, Nico Nico calendar, which we have introduced in our company. We have not gotten live on it as yet. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, it's available in the product. We have as much resistance as any of your company would have of anything that needs to be done. So it's not that we have any better because we build something, we don't use it ourselves. So this is every day when a person logs in, you check how are you feeling today or excited. Okay. How many people are feeling amused? How many people are feeling optimistic? How many are confused, annoyed, sad, and so on and so forth? Sorry. This tells you the mood of the company. It's you see, you have purchasing manager index, which tells you how the economy will do. So most reliable index of what the economy will do is called the PMI index. If PMI index is 51, economy will expand. If PMI index is 49, economy will contract. This is the most relied index all over the world. It's called the PMI index. So when economies have PMI index, why won't you have, and PMI index is nothing else, but how does a purchasing manager feel about the economy? That's what it is all about. So if companies have that, they will know whether they're, they still predict your balance sheet before anything else does. So if you get a sense that all is gloom and doom, so this is a very celebrated article by Geoff Colvin, who I guess is the editor of Fortune magazine still. This came in recently, this article. He says there is a lot humans can do uh, which is different from what robots can do. And especially in areas where there is creativity, empathy, social sensitivity. If you have not read this article, you must read that article because it shows you two images and asks you to say which shows what and so on. So what emotion does it show? And if you, you can see your own score of how much empathy you have towards people or not. And also, you know, while we worry about where will the, all the jobs go, there is another trend emerging which is which gives us hope, which is people no longer want mass production. For example, in US, craft beer is the, is the main thing. The designer beers are the main thing. So microbreweries brewed here using this hops and so on and so forth. For example, I never go to a Starbucks chain or something. I always look for individual run coffee shops. Or not big wineries. I look for a winery run by husband and wife team or somebody who has a passion involved in the job they do and not part of a very large setup. In the last slide, for those of you who have not seen the movie, it's a must-see movie. This is in turn. So don't worry, experience never goes out of uh, fashion. Yeah. And there is, there is still hope. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, <laughs> lovely, lovely. Can we, very nice. How many of you have seen the intern? 
It really is one of those heartwarming, all is right with the world, regardless of all the decadal changes that we're in the middle of. Really lovely. VA, thank you very much. Um, uh, you know, what uh, Virinder has really done is point out both the future of, future of work and workplaces, but interestingly, he's pointed out how forward-thinking uh, HR organizations can themselves be structured. What I appreciated very much uh, uh, is, you know, I think what you've indicated, and I don't know whether the word has been used, but for the last some time, what we're really facing is the rise of the trust economy. You know, you're seeing that in your teams, guys will walk out of interviews with you and tell the guys that are outside, this is what was asked, this is what happened, et cetera, et cetera. There's a rise of confidence, but there's the rise of the trust economy, Airbnb, typical example, right? 10% of Airbnb users actually trash the apartments or things that they use, they, they ruin it. It doesn't matter. It is valued at a higher valuation than, than or, you know, the largest hotel company uh, in the world. So there's the rise of, of the trust uh, economy. There is the fact that time spans are collapsing, which you said, so junk and annual appraisal. Uh, the rise of the trust economy is linked to the need for openness and transparency, which is what you actually raised. The need to have constant learning and accelerated performance. So you're going to need to pick if, nah, and this, you know, his theme of it's going to take nine months for an electronic flight plan like that, like that. To, be, uh, to be developed, you have to collapse to 45 days. This is actually a reality everywhere because business cycles themselves are shortening. If you look at what's happening to the automobile companies in the, uh, in the country, you're seeing that with just the product launches and the engineering and re-engineering that they're resorting to doing. So that itself, so our ability to find the right skill sets because the bulk will get done by automation and by outsourcing, but you will find the right skill set which will help you to accelerate the performance uh, that you need to do. We have time for just one or two questions and comments. Uh, may I invite some? Can I come to Shikha at Canon? Just speak up, Shikha, the mic will reach you. that you gave was um, uh, people can have their own travel policy, for example, or uh, they somebody may not ask HR and introduce uh, uh, the, uh, some new initiative. My question is, how do you get past uh, auditors or uh, the, you know, uh, where they want to come and check what is your policy and what is the process and how did you do what the way you do it? Yeah, so I think uh, initially I was also thrown things like Sarban's Oxley and all that stuff at me. So my message was we have an official policy and that is no policy. <laughs> so as long as your official policy says we don't have a policy, the Sarban's Oxley guy can't do anything. As long as your official policy says that we they can't do anything, seriously. But your official policy has to say that we have no policy on this matter or we trust people to do what is right to do. Uh, this was a case that came up uh, in Netflix. Netflix, if you read about them, the exactly the same thing happened with them. They're a very large public listed company in America, which is all about servants and all that nonsense that goes on along with it is that. So we are over-governed, and we are managing people like children. Uh, if, uh, if I were to, you know, stir a controversy here, the difference between Infosys and uh, Cognizant is, Cognizant trusts his people a lot more than Infosys did. Infosys started managing from head office. The accountant started running, you know, why did you have muffin in the morning and stuff like that sitting in Bangalore to somebody sitting in Melbourne? And uh, that slowed the company down massively. Well, Cognizant in general trusts people and makes them spend. If you go and have a dinner as a salesperson, they will not ask you questions. So ultimately, it's a matter of whether you treat people responsibly or not, and that's a matter of trust. And if you're not smart enough to figure out who are cheating the company, then you know you are foolish. Is the size of the company, does that matter? Sorry? Does the size of the company matter? Yes. See, today's world, if you are big and you're not agile, then you're walking dead like, you know, uh, the likes of HP Dells and so on are right now. So. So either you That's why Dell has done that wonderful, uh, massive $67 billion proposed so, acquisition. So my view of that is, you know, two, two foolish people have come together and more foolishness will happen now. <laughs> but, you know, size of company, but I have to say also what will happen is that whenever you're testing something new, 
when you're testing a horizon, there will be the first movers who will take the, who will do the steps, who will take the steps and they will fail. And the ones that follow will be the ones that will actually end up, uh, uh, you know, being quicker off the mark. Uh, because there, as long as you're observant and conscious of your external environment, not just competition, but also other related industries. So uh, if there were those that set new benchmarks for us, uh, the, the old economy IT companies, for example, they would be old economy because they were really the, the, the ones that went out there and set up, then you will have the ones that there will be failures and the intelligent among us will be those that follow. So if you speak to Rajesh Garget, uh, who used to, uh, who's been CFO at Cadbury and Cipla, etc., and he will always tell me that when I'm undertaking something on technology, I'm not, and he's big, I mean, he's got a book coming out on, uh, on it, there is no more IT focused uh, CFO than him, and he says, you know, I, I worry about being the first mover. I may lose on time, but I can, uh, you know, uh, I, I have the, the liberty of not having uh, to be the one to make the bigger failures. So in the, in, in the case of Infi and uh, Cognizant, maybe that may also have been, uh, have been partially the case. Now, can I come uh, uh, to, I've got a, a comment right there, Ashish Piche, and then we must close, although I have to give, uh, you know, one word to Raja on, on future of work, please. Go ahead. I have to make a comment on the not having a policy. Mm. Uh, my com I was earlier heading the finance of the company, so I had a little leverage on such kind. Mm. Uh, now after that, when I took over the, it's the human resources division. So we had made a policy that uh, uh, there is no limit of expenditure. That was a policy which we have written. Mm. Actually, in last four years, except for the salary expenditure, all other expenditure was static. That was a kind of advantage we got yeah. for not having a formula. And uh, uh, all the employees, associates were told that you spend the way you like to spend, the way you live. And most of the senior managers, instead of uh, choosing a business class flight, they went by economic class if they choose to choose. And all the five-star facilities were abandoned. They started sharing the rooms. And the cost really came, I will not say it decreased, but it did not increase at all for the last four years, except the salary one. Yeah. So this is a good experience, what I, when the auditors ask, we have online policy, no limit for expenditure. Yeah, yeah, how interesting. What a nice example. It also goes to Jeff Colvin's statement, which uh, VA thoughtfully put out, which is talent is, he said humans are underrated, and at the bottom, he's, the book is actually called Talent is Overrated. Yeah. Talent is overrated, humans are underrated. So I think you have to be able to trust teams to be, uh, you know, of that variety. I, I'm going to come to Raja, if I may, please. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks, Vee, for the, uh, you know, thought-provoking presentation. You know, while one of the things which I always believe uh, is looking at the future of work in terms of how the business is going to pan out, one of the things which I believe is going to happen is there are no longer going to be hierarchies, it's going to be networking. Uh, networking will replace hierarchy. Similarly, without hierarchy, there's no authority. So influences will, in how do you influence people is what is going to replace, uh, you know, authority. Uh, boundaries are going to become fuzzy. And I like, I used to like Iridium's uh, words, geography will become history. So how do you manage across geographies is going to be how do you manage across businesses, how do you manage across generations, which is also a, a boundary which is going to be breached. Uh, I believe that the future workplace is not going to be a workplace with too much of permanent workmen. You did show it in your hierarchy with talent out there. I believe it's going to be more of uh, part-time employees, specialists, consultants, when I say consultants, not the consultants in the true word, the people who will be individual specialists will come in and work and go. I call it the Velcro revolution, which is going to happen very soon, much earlier than 2025, where just like in uh, Hollywood or Bollywood, where a team gets together as a pro for a project, uh, you know, a cameraman, an actor, an actress, a director, they do a successful movie, split. Similarly, here also projects will happen and they'll split. If they're successful, they'll come back again together as a group, otherwise two different groups will come. Today, I, I was reading somewhere saying that Gallup did a survey of 143 countries as of today, and we said only 13% of the world workforce among these 143 countries are engaged. 63% are not engaged. 
So as of now, HR and organizations don't have a clue on even how to engage employees in the present setup. So you can imagine what it is going to be in the future. So in my own mind, I think if HR function remains the way it is today, uh, it will be extinct in 2025 because there's no value add. Unless there's a value add which comes in from the HR function and folks like us constantly renewing ourselves and refreshing ourselves to meet the future of how to hire, how to, you know, how to retain, how to engage. I agree 100% with you that we will be relevant, but not relevant in the way we are today. Thank you. You know, it's not just an engage. It's not just a demography or uh, a sector issue because you know you may think you know my business doesn't have you know the younger people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but people's attitudes, regardless of age, are actually changing massively. I mean, my father is far more networked than I am. Uh, I'm not on Facebook, but uh, my father is the most prolific Facebook user. It's an extreme example, and uh, but uh, you know, it's uh, uh, people's attitudes are, are are changing. Just simply the fact of of the fact that at 60 today, there is nobody who's looking to retire, right? So I think there's a whole new plethora, and as long as we're listening to all of this and not really hearing, we will start to make changes. Uh, to what we need to do, as if I know you had a comment, but we are 15 minutes beyond time. I've got to. Just one question. Yes. Just a question. Go ahead. Uh, how does Ramco uh, treat failure? Hmm. Failure is very. Because you said you mentioned that you have an annual appraisal failure still going is, on. Yeah, failure is very welcome. In fact, uh, we want people to take risk, and we keep taking risk with a lot of new technologies, the flavor of which keeps changing very often. And we are into a lot of unknown things, so we, we welcome failures. We would rather have people try and fail than not uh, try at all. And trust me, we have a more entrenched set of uh, people with their set ways of thinking than you can imagine. So it is extremely difficult to run through any change. Uh, there are enough people plotting how to make, make sure this change doesn't happen or uh, it fails the next time. So it really takes tremendous amount of perseverance to change what we want to change. And uh, for us, we have to try newer and newer things without doubt. And that will mean failure as well, because many campaigns fail, a lot of money gets wasted. We spent about $200,000 on Google AdWords. We recently said, OK, Iran is coming out. Let's reach across to every LinkedIn user in Iran and see whether we get any opportunity out of that. Nothing came out of it. So we just try and fail. and that's, what we do is we cut our losses very quickly. Every week we review what worked, what didn't work, cut it out, then this didn't work. We use some keywords, we used a keyword like tracking. And we realized that we, were, we wasted some $10,000 Google AdWords worth of money where people wanted to track the flights. And they were keying on our ad and thinking that you know, this is a tracking software. So we quickly cut the tracking word out and move out of it. So we keep making mistakes, but the fact is keep looking every day and course correcting every day. Yeah. You know, it's an adage of the better to have loved, loved and lost than never to have loved at all. The better to have tried and, and failed and rather to. So, you know, these are things we grew up with. These are what we tell our children about. Um, and we've just got to make sure that, you know, we're able to live them. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to conclude for a very quick lunch and then reconvene for the, um, uh, uh, you know, for the, for the group discussions. Uh, I'm going to try and squeeze it. My apologies. I'm going to try and squeeze the next uh, session to start at about 2.30. So I will request that we get our lunch uh, 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 and then come and settle down. The team will reorganize this, this room itself for the group discussions. All of you, most of you have attended these meetings before and you know the tables will come together. But before we uh, step out for lunch, may I uh, request you to uh, join me in thanking VA for a very interesting conversation. Thank you.